Konnichiwa, which means hello in Japanese, because today we are trying a nice Japanese whiskey, Nika, whiskey from the barrel. We got the camera shy camera guy. Right back here. We got usual. the live studio Woo! audience. And we got Nika, whiskey from the barrel. This is only the third Japanese whiskey I've tried. Whiskey without an E, mind you. You can see I was sipping on this already. Um, well, we had to warm up the palate. Absolutely. Prime it. Well, prime it. Yeah, sure. Just got my beak a little bit wet, you know? Yeah. It's a cool bottle. That's an awesome bottle. Yeah, I like it. So, Nika Whiskey from the barrel. Yeah. Where is this? Tell me about it. It's got a little bit of a screw cap, but I kind of like it on this bottle. First time I've ever liked the screw cap uh, scenario. I feel like it could use a topper, but okay. Mm -hmm. This uh, was Whiskey Advocates 2018 Whiskey of the Year. Really? Yeah. Okay. Uh, the distillery is Yochi Distillery and, um, I'm going to mess this up, My Gakyo Distillery, which they're both owned by Nika. It's a blend of at least a hundred different whiskeys Whoa. from malted to grain. So it's. It's not like 100% malted barley. All right, right, so we got some malted barley in there. We got some probably... Some other cereal grains. Yep. And it's... So it's a blend of over 100. So some of them are aged in ex-bourbon barrels. Some are aged in ex-sherry butts. They're refilled, recharred, and remade uh, hogsheads. Cost for this was about 80 bucks. All right. It's This is a 750 milliliter. Right. I know some people uh, have a, a smaller version of it. Um... No age statement. It's 102.8 proof. They they don't put the proof. They put ABV, which is 51.4, obviously. Um, let's talk about the color. All right, color it is. All right, so we're looking at a light. This is almost like a peanut oil type color, too. And I called it light honey with a uh, amber tint. Yeah. The legs, can't really pick up on them. What do you think, Brandon? Let's taste it! All right, let's do that. I tell you, you always do that nice color segment really well. I, hats off to you, pal. You know, I, I research really hard for it. <laughs> yeah, no, it's a nice cool color, a little bit of amber tint. Uh, kind of strange legs. I don't know if I've ever seen legs quite like that before. They're a little streamy. Yeah. Yeah. Nose is delightful for me. I get light smoke, dark sweet fruit. I definitely get some wine casks. I definitely get a barley. Yeah. I get cigar and our nice brininess. Definitely some nice cigar wrappers. It smells phenomenal. I love it. Maybe even some cocoa there, huh? You get any of that? What are you picking up on it? A lot of what you said. I get the cocoa, the brininess, there's so much to it, but I feel like since it's so well balanced, I can't really pinpoint anything. It is very, very well pleasant. balanced. It's nicely layered, no dominant. And I'm not getting any ethanol at all on it. No. 100 proof, you would get something. So it says- 102 proof, I'm sorry. Sure, 102.8, I think. Um, it says whiskey from the barrel, and it is a higher proof for, um, you know, a scotch type whiskey, right? Right. But. Um, that being said, it is not a cask strength. Really? Right. They they keep this pretty consistent at that uh, that proof point. So yeah, it's not a cask strength, but it's I don't. So they call it from the barrel, but I don't think I'm pretty sure it's not a cask strength. Okay. Don't quote us. <laughs> anyway, ready to taste it? Okay. Mmm. 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 Oh, this is different. I love it. Wow, this is good. I get the it's cigar very, very up different. front. Cigar up front. That dark fruit comes through. Mm. And some brininess. So the nose is a little bit more complex than the palate, but dark fruit, tobacco, and brininess on the palate. Wow. You, you know, look I, like I, you just blew your mind. Well, it's, you know, I've sipped this before, but now that I'm warmed up, I can really dissect it a little bit more. I'm getting, I don't know what it is, but it is, it's not your typical whiskey flavor. Like, I'm not getting your typical 
like straight up barley. I know it's not 100% malted barley, but it does have a, I want to say it's barley heavy, if I were to guess. But it's, it's not your typical barley grain blend where it just tastes, I don't, I can't put my finger on it. It's delightful and I think it's that perfect blend, the way they blend over like a hundred different whiskeys. Some aged in sherry cast, some in, um... I don't, it's so like different, but so incredibly enjoyable. It's, it's completely different than anything that I've really had. Anything I've ever had as well, yeah. It's completely different and incredibly enjoyable. Wow. It's got a nice mouthfeel. On mm. the finish, I got some dark fruit, some coffee, some chocolate, still that cigar. Yeah, like still the creaminess, mouthfeel, a little vanilla. A little vanilla? Yeah. I don't think I picked that up. On the finish, I still got that cigar, some smoke, some salted caramel. It fades into like a light cinnamon with some baking spices. It fades into almost like an Isla Scotch for me. Isla? No. It's no. got a peatiness at the end. It does have peatiness all the way through, but nowhere near the depths of a Isla Scotch as far, oh, well, as, far as peat. Well, as far as is it is it identical to an Isla Scotch? No, I'm getting hints of Isla Scotch. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah, okay, I can see that because I, I know some of them, some of the scotches in this are peated. Oh, there you go. I said scotch is in this because I think of scotch when I taste it, but it's not a scotch. It is a scotch style blended whiskey, I think, is what I would call it. Okay. Right? I'm, I'm still getting a little bit of Isla on the finish. Just a little, a hint of it. Yeah, yeah. But that's well balanced uh, it, with it, other things. There's, it, It's reminiscent of some of the other scotches mm. that have that Coila mm. in it, you know, kind of like the reminiscent of that Johnny Walker. 18 year old that we yes, had, right? That, Reminiscent that, that of that it. creamy mouthfeel. But still a different animal. Mm. And I think more enjoyable than even that 18 year old was. I think so too. Yeah? I would like to put them next to each other. I know, but they're so different that it wouldn't yeah. be worth doing. Yeah, I mean, maybe in a blind at some point. Yeah, it would never make sense to. But I tell you, this is one, if, if I see it, I'll probably grab it because I would want to keep something like this in stock. One, because it, I, it's a conversation point of a Japanese whiskey. Cool bottle. It's an awesome bottle. It totally needs a topper, something cool, but I'm just saying. And also, not only, it, it's a good uh, conversation starter from Whiskey Advocate. Like, hey, this was Whiskey Advocate's 2018 Whiskey of the Year. I see why. And really, if you want to expand your palate and just try something different, this is something that I would go to just because it's so different. It's unique. That's the word I'm looking It's for. unique. It's unique in itself. I love that chocolate on the finish. I'll tell you. I like the, f the dark fruitiness, those, the, those wine layers of the sherry. Yeah, this is well worth $80. The, the peat smoke. I mean, light, light peat, but it's in there and it's ah, just so beautifully woven together. And balanced. I think after, it's, so it's all those blends. And I think after they blend it, they keep it in their 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 rick houses or cellars or wherever they store it in their barrels for uh, like six months or something. So it really marries it together yeah. nicely, I think. This is wonderful. It's wonderful, right? So yeah, would I keep it in stock? Absolutely. Yeah. I would get this again. 80 bucks for a 750, that's not so bad at all for this. This is a delightful tasting whiskey. Listen, I spend a lot more money on whiskeys I don't like nearly as much. And I like this proof point. Yeah. For a scotch style whiskey, yep. I think this is just wonderful. And you get no ethanol, you get no bite. This is one, if you haven't tried it, you need to try it. This and if you have tried it, please let us know what, what you think as well. Yes, because this please. is just. Tell us in the comments what you think of this because. This just blew me away. I was not expecting this. I would have walked by this every single time I've ever seen it. I got this thinking, all right, well, I'll have one pour out of it and do the review. But I loved it so much that anybody that came over that was a, any kind of whiskey drinker, I was like, try this, try this, try this. Because. Boy, I, I think it's well worth trying. I like it. It looks like you have a lot of friends. <laughs> <laughs> well, Pete, Pete from the American Whiskey Experience, he came over, he tried it. He thought, oh, I he think he thought it. it was good, right? It as well. And we've had it a few times. Uh, yeah, it's good. It's good. So uh, today I don't have a quote, but what I brought to you today is a Japanese idiom. I feel like that's fair. Not an idiot. I'm, I'm an idiot, but I'm not Japanese. I have a Japanese idiom. All right, what do you got? It's one I can really relate to. Ready? Ready. A mouth causes trouble. <laughs> I don't know how to say it in Japanese, but that's what it loosely translates a to. A mouth causes trouble. Yeah. So you're telling me to keep my mouth shut? <laughs> <laughs> Always. Hey, thanks for coming. Like, subscribe. How about I could say goodbye in, uh, or a thank you in Japanese? Go for it. Gomo arigato. 
Mr. Robata? No, oh my God. 